few people have had profound scripting in win-win. How many of us here have had scripting, that is, socializing processes from many experiences in many settings, toward win-lose? How many have been scripted or mentored a little more toward lose-win? How many have been scripted that when you really get into interdependent situations where you have to cooperate in order to accomplish a commonly desired goal, that the best you can come up with realistically is compromise? How many have been scripted in that way? We're talking here about these scripting sources where people get their models and their mentors. Entire cultures, entire groups or organizations, not just individuals, script. You almost get absorbed into the milieu, the, the climate of an organization or a family. And a lot of people never even think about it. They just, it's the air they breathe. They never question it. It's like the pair of glasses. You never really question the lens. That's literally how the scripting toward win-lose or lose-win or just the kind of narcissistic, selfish approach of win starts. Let's just look at some of those. First, the family. Particularly if love is given conditionally. In most people's lives, they've been powerfully scripted toward win-lose. The key scripting, the key mentoring and modeling is in the first few years with the family. Uh, that's why I often say to parents that the kindest thing that a husband or a wife can do for their children is to treat the husband or the wife, the spouse, with tremendous respect and love and consideration. And to model in the home a win-win approach to problem solving rather than a fighting approach or a flighting approach, you know, kind of giving up. Always be grateful for the child that tests you the most because it's that child that enables you to show unconditional love, love without condition. And when the other children sense that, they too know they are loved unconditionally. But if you love conditionally, and you've got one that really tests you to the very limits, and you, in a sense, give in to a win-lose spirit or a lose-win spirit to where you just kind of bag the child, just have your way, do your thing or whatever. You've instantly communicated to the rest, when push comes to shove, if it gets too far, you too will be loved conditionally. And the root of unconditional love is so basic to the concept of the abundance mindset, see, to where your security comes from within instead of from without, where you're compared to other people. Because if you're constantly in a state of comparison, then obviously you're going to be scripted emotionally toward win-lose. So basic. And that's in the family. And there are so many things you can do in the family. The most foundational one is how you treat your spouse. And then how you treat the child that tests you the very most. Then do everything you can to create a win-win approach in all that takes place. We used to do our family work parties on Saturday morning. So we'd set a goal to have so much done by a certain time and that everyone would do what's necessary and then we would have a special kind of party or some reward. We'd go do something as a family. In bowling, we would go for a family score instead of just for individual scores. There are so many ways you can start to inculcate the spirit of win-win. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a place also for some parlor games and competition. The key thing is that there's respect for both forms of human interaction. They each have their place in life. But let's not push out the interdependency and the cooperation in the name of everything is a big competition. I would say that if you're in the school business or if you could influence the school business to try to get a spirit of teamwork at school. Get people to work as teams instead of individually only. I'm not against individual work as well. That's important. 
but also teamwork, where they learn to interact with other people and to come up with better solutions. And I would do away with all normal distribution curves. I'd have people either be graded against a standard which was clearly communicated, in which you as a teacher said, my job is to help you. My job is not to judge you, it's to help you reach the standard. A grade will come out in terms of that standard, but my job is to help every one of you get an A. But a lot of people were raised, in a sense, in a school where collaboration and cooperation was called cheating. And they're getting programmed toward win-lose right in the school. The problems in society are problems of interdependency. They really are. Are they not? Think about it. Think of every field of human endeavor. So I would say, try to influence schools toward teams, teamwork, more cooperation. So the application of this way of thinking at home, think of all of the different ways at school, and also the way they relate to their peers. Avoid comparison languages between people. You're better, you're prettier, you're more handsome, you're, you know, you are the one that stood out. Just kind of avoid comparisons. And yet most of us have been powerfully raised in this kind of Windler scripting where criticisms, complaining, and comparison, and competition were just the way things are. How many can relate to that? See, most of us can. Oh, athletics. Let me just mention a couple there. I saw my son Stephen training his son Stephen to prepare for a particular soccer game. And he was talking about the goals to be accomplished. I was so impressed by that. So I went to my son Joshua in his soccer game and basically said to him, son, let's talk about what some of the goals could be. What do we want to accomplish? You know, his mind primarily because of the culture was what? win okay so we put that down as one of the goals we want to win now do you want to try your hardest do you want to do your best would that be another goal yeah yeah what if you tried your hardest and achieved that goal even though you didn't win now what about a team spirit you want to pull together as a team instead of just having hot-dogging, grandstanding people that want all the attention. You want to assist people and be happy for them and, and be happy for the people that hardly ever have a chance to play so that they can develop some skills too and really hope for other people's successes. What would you think of that? Another goal. Have you ever gone to a game where you had fun till you lost, then it was no fun? What about having fun? And probably the most important goal of all is learn, to learn. What did you learn? What did the team learn? And so since that time we started that process, we literally, after every game, go through the five goals. Did you try your hardest? Did you win? We lost. Did you try your hardest? I did. Did you work as a team? Did you try to assist? Were you happy for other people's successes? Yes, I felt good about that. Did you have fun, son? I did. It was a lot of fun. It's more fun, he said, when we win. <laughs> yeah, it is. But that doesn't mean you can't have fun when you lose. Did you learn? What did you learn? Do you think the team learned? What did the coach say to you afterwards? Look, you accomplished four of the five goals. That's tremendous, son. One time you won. You accomplished five of the five goals, and you learned. I mean, that'll help you better accomplish the next time you play.